<clears throat> somehow this means that he hates women. And these feminists twisted mind. All right. Well, I need to actually make up a list of of uh, indicators of toxic females, which is would which would include uh, being a fan of Twilight, since it shows a psychological profile of a woman with an entitlement attitude, um, daddy issues, a a the the uh, in, has inadequacy problems, struggles to be validated. Um, has other deep-seated issues, uh, you know, as seen by wanting the, the vampire creepy dude. I mean, this, when I watched that part where Edward followed Bella, you know, into the woods, this was flipping, it was about a little more than a year ago, yeah. I was flipping through channels back when I still had cable TV. Um... Uh, <clears throat> me and my girlfriend were sitting on the couch and I was flipping through channels and um, you know, Twilight came on and I remember almost like screaming at the television when Edward's character, or Edward, was following Bella into the woods and basically stalking her. I'm like, why the fuck is this guy not getting a fucking sexual harassment charge against him? Why is this dude not rotting in prison? You know, why is the stereotypical shit not happening? <laughs> and to watch Bella say, you know, when, when Edward tells her that he's a killer and all that, she says, I don't care. I, I trust you. And all this other shit just because he's attractive. You see, that's the dilemma here. You know, the guy is supposedly not a fucking creeper if she's attracted to him. She goes into more further validation warfare. I mean, there's just so much stuff, you know, that, that people don't understand. I mean, look, in my daily life, I avoid women. Like, as much as I kind of, as much as I can get by with. I mean, my boss at my job is female. I can't just avoid interactions with her or else, you know, you can get in trouble for that. You know, they call it insubordination, you know. Ignoring somebody also, anyway, when, when my boss asks me to do something, I just... Don't say anything and ignore her, you know, that's interpreted as saying no, and it's a lack of cooperation, and it's insubordination, all kind of other stuff. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, I mean, my workplace, we got like 16 people employed there, and how many guys do we got? Well, we're about to lose one guy because he's quitting because he lives too far away, and he don't like the job. Let's see, there's me... Well, there's five guys employed there right now, and there's 16 employees total, so two out of three employees are women. Okay, so I work in a female-dominated workplace. Okay, now if we lose that one dude, because he lives a couple counties up, and I'm, I'm surprised he even would bother to drive that far down. I thought he lived closer. Uh, so anyway, um, he's, he's quitting the job and that'll put us down to 15 employees of which four of them are, would be male. Um, yeah. So that'd be roughly one out of four employees are male. One out of four. But, um, yeah. Anyway, it, it, more than half of the amount of, the, uh, more than half of the amount of the workers, you know, half of the amount of the employees, more than half of the employees who I work at are female. I work in a female dominated workplace. <clears throat> and, uh, yep. And, you know, so I have to deal with all this other kind of stuff, the, the things they talk about, and just... Now, I've been pretty quiet lately, so they feel like they got a little... You know, like they can say certain things and, <laughs> like, not have consequences. Like, they'll actually talk about just sexual things and all that, and, like, nobody really says anything. As a matter of fact, that dude that's quitting, uh, they tossed a... Um, oh, what was it? They tossed a Illustrated Kama Sutra on his workstation... And all that, some of the uh, ladies that work there, and uh, <laughs> and I pretended like I didn't know. 
Yeah, there's women that did that uh, to a man. Uh, yeah, well, he's 17, so he's technically a boy, but still. Anyway, yeah, you know, 40, 40 and 50-year-old women, you know, tossed a uh, fully illustrated Kama Sutra, you know, sex book, on a 17-year-old dude's, um, you know, workstation. But, you know, no lawsuits, nobody got in trouble. It's just harmless, innocent fun, right? Ah! Anyway, more sarcasm emphasized. All right, all right. So anyway, back to this one girl that uh, that that pursued me and all that. Like, um, yeah, she's uh, she's into Twilight. You know, okay, okay, toxicity is what I was getting to. Okay, you know, they like Twilight because you know women like Twilight because they got deep seated issues. <laughs> uh, you know, the struggle for validation. You know, the quest to be you know to become adequate and to become whole. And to be desired and love triangle bullshit and man fights over the woman so the woman feels even more important and all kind of other stupid shit. Okay, uh, tattoos, <laughs> yes. <laughs> the whole one-upmanship, uh, yeah, because, uh, you know, because men have histor historically, you know, the, the warriors have had tattoos and all that. Um, anyway. Um, so women want to be, you know equated with that level of strength of a man so they get tattoos and all that and okay smoking oh my gosh well for that one you can go look into edward bernays and a.a a. brill and um yep and uh nearly a century ago um back in the 1920s uh you can just uh you can just uh watch a documentary where they interview Edward Bernays before he died and he talked about how he got women to smoke. And, uh, yep. That one is somewhat well documented. I don't need to explain it any further, but uh, go look into what Edward Bernays was doing, one of his earliest uh, PR campaigns. <clears throat> okay, so women smoking, that's another toxicity issue. Uh, women drinking. Okay, I found out last year <laughs> that when a when a girl is drunk, uh, she will just about rape a guy. Um. Yeah, the uh, we've already talked about that. Me and the disposable human doing. Uh, we've talked about that in a video that I think I may have uploaded already, but I need to um need to make sure it's all available and stuff and. And, uh, yeah, I think it'll actually be my newest video other than this one here. And, uh, so anyway, um, yeah, there's that. And I'll be back in just a minute. <clears throat> here we go. And, uh, let's see. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, w women being into heavy metal. Um... Romance novels, yes, definitely an indicator of toxicity right there. And definitely a, uh, romance novels are definitely an indicator of deep-seated issues. And, uh, you know, romance novels are regarded as something, uh, initially harmless, um, and all that. But, uh, once again, following the whole stereotype... Uh, if you remember how things were in the uh, uh, decade ago, in the early 2000s, how, um, uh, you know, how there's this an this big conspiracy and, and how all Muslims should be sus suspect of being Al-Qaeda sympathizers and all that, and, and how feminism actually works that way, you know, within the female gender. Um <clears throat> And following with, with keeping with that, now you 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 know you've heard about the Quran, which is the uh, Muslim holy book. You know what 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 the Bible is to Christians and Jews. That's what the Quran is to uh, to Muslims. And um, there's an equivalent like that amongst women. And what it pretty much is is uh, romance novels. <clears throat> I mean, it's like a drug to them, and it's their version of porn, uh, but much more subtle and disguised, um, because once again, women struggle to maintain dignity. Now, what Esther Viller also talked about is women also struggle to maintain their childlike appearance. 
That's why they do whatever it takes to maintain their youthful beauty. And not just that. The way they laugh, the way they express things. They are an imposter. They are an imposter of a child. That's how Esther Viller, a woman who wrote a book that I read, and she describes this kind of stuff in her book, that women are like imposters, and they try to basically pass themselves off as children uh, to, in a way, at a subconscious level, try to trick the man into thinking that women are children uh, so that, therefore, it will invoke his protector-provider instincts on an, on an even more intense level to provide for and protect her, and which basically gives her what she wants. Uh, at the man at the man's expense. I mean, you, you look at all his fucking like hold on. I mean, you, you look at like well, you know, Barbarossa Barbarossa mentions all this over sexualization of women in the media. I mean, you see all this fantasy focused on you know, sexualizing teenage girls, and, you know, it's up on Rolling Stone magazine. I remember when Britney Spears turned 18 years old, and they, you know, sexually objectified her on there, and then they do it with Miley Cyrus, and they do it with all the other girls, <clears throat> and turn them into a sex object of desire, you know, so so they, they just, they just push all this stuff up in men's faces, but then when the man acts on that, pursues that, then he's labeled as a fucking creepy stalker, child molester, sexual deviant, you know, detriment to society. Um, you know, I guess it's the equivalent of putting a, a liquor store in a predominantly black neighborhood, you know? I mean, it's just bait to cause a problem. Or whatever. You know, I'm not saying that blacks are bad, I'm just saying that it's like, you put a liquor store in anybody's neighborhood and you pretty much out of convenience, you know, somebody's going to, you know, become a patron or a customer of that liquor store and whatever else happens. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, uh, when I used to work security over in a nearby city, I used to have to deal with yuppies all the time. And uh, most of these yuppies are white, and they just... All this shit they used to do, just fucking goddamn act like there was no such thing as consequences. But anyway, alright. Alright, what KProxy1001, the dipshit, says is, uh... You, honest to God, look like a child rapist that drives around in a white van with no windows. You are that guy. Well, first of all, I'm not. And, you know, not everybody... You know, not everybody drives a white van just like yours, K-Proxy 1001. Uh, and, you know, I'll just go even further. Not everybody can be a child rapist like you up on, on up to your level of success with it, you know. You just keep throwing those accusations out, you're going to get them right back at you, okay. But, you know, you're too dumb to know this kind of stuff, you know. I mean, like, you're a victim of your own stupidity. I mean, it's like, it's like that because you didn't know these things... You act like I didn't know him, and then therefore needed to be told about him. You know? But, I mean, what can I expect from somebody who's dumb enough to, like, just make a YouTube channel just so they can comment and, you know, criticize other people? Okay. So I say um, to uh, KProxy1001, I say, uh, so is that why I have a conscience and want to let women have their space? Um, that I'm s some kind of so-called sex offender. Yeah, I mean, like, am I a sex... Why am I called a sex offender when I want to let women have their space? See? This dipshit just wants to... I mean, see, they do this, you know, attack the messenger to discredit the message. Uh, that's what they do. I mean, like, fuck. I mean, is this is this guy over here watching me, you know, and... No, I don't do what he accused me of. And, you know, apparently we're in this society where it doesn't take, you know, you, you don't have to have evidence. So now I'm going to start doing all this shit and expect all this impunity, you know, because, you know, these other people do. You, you don't need, I mean, you know, feminists, 
you know, i.e. women, have really set the bar. You know, you don't need evidence anymore. You know, just make an accusation, and, you know, it's it's supposed to stick. You know? All right. And then I said, it would be nice to have some real equality by accusing every woman who tries to score with a guy as being a sex offender. Matter of fact, let's take it further. Sarcasm emphasized. Perhaps we can lynch all those female teachers who sexually assaulted all those young boys. Look in the mirror to confirm the identity of the child rapist and stop projecting onto me. Oh, that was so cool. And, uh... <clears throat> so anyway... Um, let's see... Um... All right. Uh, huh, huh. Oh, let's see what other comments I get. Oh, yes, Mike Murdoch. Here's this little dumb fucker. Right here. Now, I just uh, I just banned this guy like maybe an hour ago or whatever. Now, you, you look at this guy, and they make comments. Uh, browser videos. Wow, that's, uh, that's no surprise. The reason why they don't have any video views is because they don't have any videos to be viewed. They don't have any subscribers because they don't generate any content, you know. Uh, so literally, this Mike Murdoch motherfucker, I mean, like, he just he just made this YouTube channel so he can, like, get on YouTube and, like, comment on other people's videos. Wow. How original. <laughs> Sarcasm emphasized. And, uh, Mike Murdoch says, Damn, this nigga gonna walk into a nunnery and start popping caps. Well, that's interesting, you know, just... Say his hurtful comment, uh, you know, and accuse me of uh, being a violent spree shooter when, you know, I have no intentions of that, you know. Matter of fact, I've actually thought about selling my firearms and getting rid of them. Most of the time, I forget they even exist because I keep them locked away, um, unloaded. And I uh, just, you know, tuck them away in that closet just like... Uh, just like the guitar that I have sitting back there, um, you know, I got a, uh, it's fairly nice, it's a Kramer, uh, Striker Custom, and, uh, it's pretty nice, only played it for a while, yeah, so, so because I have a guitar too, does that, does that mean I'm gonna violate the noise ordinance too, am I some kind of deviant in that regard, no, <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, so I got a guitar. Does that make me a loud, noisy person? No. But, you know, you're a dipshit that just wants to go around hating people because you're a dumb fuck. <clears throat> All right. All right. Now, so Mike Murdoch said, damn, this nigga gonna walk into a nunnery and start popping caps. Oh, the whole evil, hateful, violent men, and they just abuse sweetly innocent women. See, once again, the whole victim narrative. So I said to this dipshit, I said, I seriously doubt it. Once again, you so-called normal people, uh, you so-called normal people don't have a clue. Perhaps you don't know the commonality of suicidal thoughts uh, among the accused. Just goes to show how much of the issue that you don't understand Go look into the Kathy Tritola, uh, Kathy Tritola rape allegation. That one didn't happen to me. I don't know why the guy, uh, I don't know who the guy was that got accused, but I found out who the accuser was. <clears throat> and then eight hours ago, um, Mike Murdoch says, It just looks like you're trying to come off as some badass flashing your gun on YouTube. You need a mental health evaluation. You definitely shouldn't you definitely shouldn't have custody of a child. You're a fucking Asperger's nutcase. Hmm. It's a really nice thing to say to somebody. Hmm. Sarcasm emphasized once again. Uh, so oh oh okay. So when a man feels guilt for for something you know, actually, I didn't spread the rumor throughout Facebook about these two people being lesbian, but I got blamed for it, and that prompted this whole big thing uh, last year in 2011. And, uh, yeah, this invisible love triangle and all that uh, that me and the disposable human doing talked about because he was kind of a witness to this because 
he was caught up in it because um, basically there was an, there was a invisible love triangle going on. You know, the same people who I was in a love triangle with, uh, he was in a love triangle with too. Um, and uh, just like I was. And these same people tried to burn him like they burned me, you know, burn being a metaphor for, you know, imposed consequences on. They they tried to impose consequences on him like they did me, but it didn't work because he didn't have as much to lose as me. And it, it wasn't it wasn't as easy for him to, or for them to control him as it was for me and all that. Um, and uh Besides, this same girl, you know, uh, actually went to the disposable human being, yeah, the disposable human doing's house and, you know, socialized with somebody that lived there that wasn't him. But then she'd socialize with him a bit, you know, poke him in his side and try to flirt with him a little bit here and there and all that. And, of course, her lesbian lover found out about it and got all pissed off and tried to get the disposable human doing in a bunch of trouble and shit. Even though, you know, <clears throat> even though the same girl that I got in trouble, you know, regarding, uh, you know, we, we call her Bell Bottom. Uh, even though Bell Bottom, you know, would flirt with him a little bit and, and came to his house, and yet <laughs> Bell Bottom's lover, you know, lesbian lover, which we call Clam Master tried to get the disposable human doing in a bunch of trouble, just like Clam Master had tried to do to me. You know, and it didn't exactly work so well, especially when Bell Bottom is coming over to the disposable human doing's house. Go figure. <laughs> Come on. Now, the problem in that whole situation was Clam Master and using her mom... Uh, to fight her battles for her. And then the perceived, you know, the whole victim narrative that, that only women can be victims and only men can be assailants. Uh, yeah, it's all stupid. So anyway, so I say to uh, Mike Murdoch, I say, you really don't know about me. You so-called normal people and your labeling and your projections you don't know what it you don't know what it's like to be emotionally and psychologically attacked at a very core level. You don't know what it what it does to a man. You don't know me. So what's uh, so what's wrong with one harming one's own self instead of others? What about Thomas James Ball? That's right. You don't care because you don't think it affects you. I'm just waiting until it happens to you. Then um, an hour after that. Um, you know, six hours ago. Um, keep in mind the current time and date. Um, Mike Murdoch says, You said you had a kid. Now I really know you're, now I really know you're just a selfish prick. Go ahead and pop yourself, bitch. Your kid would probably be better off. All right. All he says, all you care about is yourself. <laughs> really, really. So if I wanted to kill myself, how is that just, you know, caring about myself? This dipshit doesn't seem to understand my message that I was talking about in the original video, which is right here. <clears throat> One year anniversary. Um where I talk about how I thought that I should kill myself so that no woman or anybody would ever have to feel uncomfortable because of anything I did. You know what I'm saying? Um, see, that's the problem. Right there, you know... Some people made me feel bad, and I thought, well, hmm, maybe I just shouldn't exist anymore, and then then I won't be a problem to all these other people. But, no, you know, Mike Murdoch, you know, he's just a fucking dipshit. <laughs> Once again, anything to hurt a man at his very core. <clears throat> yeah, I said I had a kid. Did I offer any proof? 
See, these people believe what they want. I mean, yeah, I do have a kid, but, like, the point is, I can say anything, and these dipshits will just say whatever they want to say. That's the whole point. You know, it's like they believe what they want. <clears throat> and people selectively believe what they want. You know, it's like, okay, I can tell somebody that I glued three popsicles to, that okay, I could tell somebody that I glued three popsicle sticks together and made a triangle, and they would believe me, even if I didn't even do it or didn't even show them that I did it or offered any proof. They'd believe it just because it sounds like something plausible. But then I can tell them that I I put on some Nike sneakers, and you know, ran twenty feet and then did a leaping jump and then like all of a sudden jumped across space and landed on Neptune. And they wouldn't believe it. Why? Because it doesn't sound plausible. I mean, you know, I couldn't just survive the coldness of space or the lack of air or atmosphere or just whatever. And then the time it would take to get that far, you know, I would, I, you can't survive that long without food or water. People know that that kind of claim just taking a running jump and jumping from planet Earth all the way and landing on Neptune, you know, it's pretty much not possible. You know what I'm saying? And that's why people wouldn't believe it. But it's certainly possible for you to take three popsicle sticks and glue them together in the shape of a triangle. And even though I didn't offer any evidence or proof in either hypothetical situation, people will still choose which one to believe based on which, you know, which one... Uh, uh, matches their perception or whatever. Y you know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just I'm just I'm just talking about human psychology here. I'm sure I'll get labeled as a hater because of that. <clears throat> These comments right here. Go ahead and pop yourself, bitch. Right there, your kid would probably be better off. That is cyberbullying, right there. Now, some kid, I mean, kid, somebody calling me a dumb fuck or whatever is, you know, or saying grow up man child, I mean, it's fine, you know, like, I mean, it might be annoying, but it's within tolerable limits, you know what I'm saying? But encouraging suicide, no, that is not tolerable. And that's why this little fucker right here, Mike Murdoch, got himself blocked. And, uh, well, just to prove it, let's see. I'll show you here. I have the, op the, the option to unblock this person, you see, as proof that I've blocked them. All right. <clears throat> All right. So I said to uh, Mike Murdoch, I said, you just got your dumb ass blocked for encouraging suicide. You don't, like, did you know that there are laws against that kind of thing? So we get suicide legislation in the United States. Historically, various states list, listed the act of suicide as a felony, but these policies were, uh, were sparsely enforced. In the late 1960s, 18 United States st uh, <clears throat> states lacked laws against suicide. By the late 1980s, 30 of the 50 states had no laws against suicide or suicide attempts, but every state had laws declaring it to be a felony to aid, advertise, or encourage another person to commit suicide. By the early 1990s, only two states still listed suicide as a crime, and these have since removed that classification. In some states, suicide is still considered an unwritten common law crime, as stated in Blackstone's commentaries. Let's see. 
as a common law crime, suicide can bar recovery for the late suicidal person's family in a lawsuit unless suicide unless a suicidal person can be proved to have been unsound in mind. That is, suicide must be proven to have been an involuntary act of the victim in order for the victim's family to be awarded monetary damages in court. This can occur... Hmm. Well, there was uh, Dr. Kevorkian, Jack Kevorkian, that got in a bunch of shit. Um, you know, for uh, assisted suicide. But, but, you know... But every state has laws declaring it to be a felony to aid, advertise, or in or to encourage another person to commit suicide. Therefore, what this little fucker Mike Murdoch said is a felony. Go ahead and pop yourself, bitch. Your kid would probably be better off. So, Mike Murdoch says this comment to somebody, which is me, who made a video talking about what they felt like and what drove them to have suicidal thoughts. Oh, that's really interesting, you know. See, and you know, it's happened to a man. Okay, now I'm going to get to something else um, later. And um, uh, okay, yeah, I said, did you know that there are laws against that kind of thing? I lost a relative in March of 2009 from suicide, and she was female. Someone told her the same kinds of things that you uh, that you just did to me, and it became an issue in the newspapers because of state law. I really don't enjoy blocking people because I never want anyone to block me, but I don't go around saying things uh, that you and never been pwned say. Uh, there's a limit, and you and and there is a limit, and okay, and you violated it. That's what I meant to say, and um. Anyway, all right, um, <clears throat> see, when, when Miles Kennison said, I find it strange that you're wearing a crazy Hawaiian shirt and holding a loaded gun to your head, then I said to them, I'll pretend like you didn't comment on that, um, anyway. We are going to watch a video about, well, wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, the, I, I got to show you this article. The, uh, um, yeah, I heard on the radio recently that, um, that, um, suicide is now the leading cause of military deaths. In the Middle East, that's right. In uh, in Iraq and and Afghanistan, soldiers killing their killing themselves with their own government issue military weapon is now more common than soldiers dying from uh, improvised explosive devices, now from accidents from combat injuries um, such as you know being shot by insurgents oh yeah look at this army seeks to curb rising tide of suicides um let's see oh fuck Ted Turner apologized for saying that soldier suicide is good oh god damn um oh yeah Let's look at this website. I've never seen this one before. <laughs> Mental health care. Fuck. Like, don't put them, like, over there in those bad situations for, you know, what might be a bullshit war, you know, built on lies anyway. Don't throw them over there in that situation. Maybe they won't be suicidal. I mean, fuck. You know? I mean, you know, they're over there for years. I mean, some of them... <laughs> Oh gosh, some of them soldiers have been over there for a long time. 
and all that, and they don't get to see their families, they don't get to see their wives, they don't get to see their kids, and whatever, I mean, it does take a toll on people, and then, like, they're expected to go around killing, you know, like, people and all that, and they probably don't want to do it, and just all these strenuous, yeah, I mean, like, now, in World War II, I don't think there was a whole lot of suicides in comparison, uh, because, you know, it was a legitimate war, and, you know, we were actually really fighting against evil, and this and that, and, you know, and, from what I, you know, I, I'm sure there was, you know, some depressing times during World War II, but, Generally, you know, a lot of people wanted to sign up to be in that war to, you know, fight for freedom and to make the world a better place. But it's not exactly happening with uh, these most recent wars. Um, and uh, uh, let's, let's learn more. Okay. Um, okay, this is not exactly what I was looking for. Um, alright. Alright. Well, let's see. Ooh. Let's see what this one shows. All right. Suicide is now the leading cause of death amongst active duty soldiers. And look what you see right here. A man. That's right. A man is over there risking his life, his safety, and everything. Making what potentially is the ultimate sacrifice. All right. You hear about the... the you hear, you know rumors about the war being about, you know, oil and all that. <laughs> what do we use, uh, what do we use oil to make? Well, for one, we use oil to make cosmetics, so women can paint their faces and snag a guy. All right, how about another thing with the brooding, um, with the, uh, turmoil in, in, uh, Africa that's been going on for decades that that apparently nobody cared about it back in the day now all of a sudden people care about it it always was a problem you know there always were people suffering in Africa but you know only recently people care about it now uh, now since Obama's in office and <clears throat> you know, of course there's the Rwandan genocide that the UN was involved in back in uh, what was it, 1994 anyway um, yeah. Alright. So, you know, like, so, see, it's, it's interesting that this soldier is black. He is of African, uh, heritage. Let, let's talk about war and, and conflict and resource. Well, let's see. Over in Africa, men, primarily men, die... Uh, in the diamond trade, they suffer. Families get broken up. There, there's children that suffer because of that. And, yeah, women suffer too because they don't got a man to be the provider and all that. Um, and, you know, so they're, they they get to be refugees that, you know, that get scattered around. And, you know, so I suppose they're a victim in that way. But, you know, it's the men that get tortured and killed um, and all that, uh, you know, on, uh, of course there's these, these diamond mines and this, this, all this stuff where they, 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 you know, mine out all these diamonds and conflict diamonds and all that as it's known. And, uh, families get destroyed. Families get destroyed. And men are tortured and killed, uh, in the diamond trade. <laughs> So, Western women can have a nice shiny rock as jewelry, uh, sometimes around their neck, but usually on their hands, and, you know, that they expect Western men to slave and toil at a job that he might hate in order to spend his paycheck 
on a rock from Africa that families suffered and died as a result to obtain so that he can buy this rock, this conflict diamond, for a woman in the West to wear on her hand and feel like she's worth something, that, to feel like she's validated, to feel like she's important, and so she can feel good about herself. F fuck, like, whose greedy selfishness is going on there? Yeah, I mean, like, most people don't understand that. Um... Mm. Oh, in 2010, for the second year in a row, more American soldiers killed themselves than died in combat. That means more soldiers killed themselves than have died in combat during this time period. Mil military officials knew they had an epidemic on their hands, but they didn't know how to mitigate the hyper-complex problem. Uh, it wasn't as easy as saying they all have post-traumatic stress disorder because a significant number of the soldiers who were killing themselves had never seen combat. <laughs> if you think you know one thing that causes people to commit suicide, please let us know. Army Vice Chief of Staff General Peter... Uh, Chiarelli told the Army Times back then because we don't know what it is. Okay? Two years later, Chiarelli and his colleagues are still failing to protect their troops from themselves. 38 Army members killed themselves in July, making that the worst month for soldier suicides the Army has had since it began tracking its suicide rates. In all other branches, the suicide rate for active duty personnel is up 22% from where it was last year. At that rate it's going, experts say it could become such that one troop per day is taking their own life. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? You know what also happens during wartime? Um, you know, while the soldier is off risking their life and their well-being for the good of the country or for the cause or whatever. Well, meanwhile, you know, his wife or girlfriend is home alone and she's lonely. And she's got needs, biological directives. So she cheats on him. Totally expects him to be loyal to her. I mean, you, you know, you see this, this, this phenomenon go on all the time. And, uh, yeah. So, uh, yep. There is a lot of injustice out there. And a lot of people don't seem to keep, a lot of, a lot of people don't seem to care if this injustice happens to men. Oh, but how dare you let it happen to a woman? Alright, let's watch another video. Ooh, yes. I've been meaning to make a video about the reactions to, um, the difference in treatment to male suffering and female suffering. I guess I'll do a little segment or a little preview on that now. something I found a few months ago. Alright, I do not want Whitney Houston. Let's look at this. <clears throat> mm. Oh, 
God damn. No, I didn't want to look at Whitney Houston. I know what her name is. I could type that in. Ah, here it is. All right. All right. Now, we see... Where do we got Mike Murdoch at? Where do we got him? Ah. Now I really know you're just a selfish prick. Go ahead and pop yourself, bitch. Your kid would probably be better off. Um... There's lots of stuff on here, um, and um, now what Musk does says is, is, man, we have a lot to live for. Let women be miserable. Okay. Don't let them drag us down their absurdity. Um, well, this guy, like, this guy right here, just let it be known that he's like one of the few people who actually, you know, is sympathetic and did not, you know, ridicule me for, you know, having suicidal thoughts. And, you know, so this person seems pretty cool. See that? M-U-S-K-D-U-H. Yeah, pretty cool. And did not bully me, okay? All right. So I just wanted to, uh, just wanted to show... Um, how, you know, when a man gets suicidal because he is, um, you know, because he is attacked at a very core inner self level, okay, and, you know, he's just regarded as creepy fuck stalker, you know, K-Proxy 1001 made that point, never been pwned, says a bunch of that shit, um, uh, Mike Murdoch, you know, says a bunch of that shit, you know, it's just the same old, uh, you know, creepy, you know, uh, creepy, sick pervert, and, um, and, uh, so anyway, it's, um, You know, uh, hello, bump a bump a snitch says, "Wow, now that's some crazy shit." I subbed the bitch. I subbed for the bitch hating, but stayed for the attempted suicide. All this other stuff. Let's see. Um, I came up with my. Oh, I've got two in my inbox since then. Um, yeah. Uh, hello, bump a snitch doesn't got a clue when I said that. You know, he's got the wrong person. Oh, now, now they're just fucking like now. This little shit is pestering me. He says, "A leading cause of death in the Middle East is bombs and bullets, buddy." Uh, I like your style, man. Kill all the queers. I get you, man. I get you. So tell me about. Uh, some of those tactics you're talking about in the other videos. Uh, you use chloroform and shit, uh, and shit yay? Uh, do you and your friend keep recording uh, recordings of these bitches' activities? That's what I do. You little fucking antagonist, little shit. Um... vote it down and uh, uh and all right I've got an article to show you since you don't know as much about the mail mine as you pretend um
All right, I said, I am not for killing anyone. This includes homosexuals. You are an instigator. Uh, so, uh, so I'm saying this dipshit. All right, and that is Hello Bumpa Snitch. Now let's see. Well, fuck! Here's another one of these dipshits. One of these fucking bottom feeders. Look at this. This dude that comments on my shit. Well, he has no video views because he has no subs and he has no subscribers because what's that? He has no videos. So they just like to get on there and they just like to comment and fucking troll. You're fucking troll. You know what? Good thing for spell checking. All right, you're a pathetic troll. Keep your distance uh, uh, from, and you're being recorded in my current YouTube video right now. Watch for your appearance in my on my upcoming videos. You know, fucking troll ass dipshit. All right. Yeah, this person's probably gonna be the next one to get blocked. Just as a warning. Now, I really don't want to be like Sarkeesian. You know, people can say all kinds of shit, but like, this little fucker's going to screw up and say something hostile, and he's going to get banned. He's going to get blocked. I mean, you know, saying what he's saying right now is annoying, but it's still tolerable, you know? Um, you know, somebody can disagree with me all day long, and it's fine. You know, like Prometheus. I, I doubt that Prometheus is going to get herself blocked, at least by me anyway. I mean, oh, me and the Prometheus, we, we have our quarrels, you know, and because we're at different, you know, we have different viewpoints about stuff. But we get along, fuck, like better than I thought we would and all that. I mean, I would regard her as like my direct opponent, you know. You know, like, enemy number one. I mean, I don't, I don't think she's really actually an enemy. And as far as I know, uh, we don't have any bad intentions toward each other. We, na we name call and all this other kind of stuff. It's kind of funny, and it, it's kind of cool, because, like... But, see, you know, and and I figured it would be clear, you know, the, femin the Femetheus is, like, radical feminist... And then here I am, like, elite MGTOW. We're pretty much on opposite ends, you know what I'm saying? And yet, we get along, ironically, fairly well. I mean, if there's anybody who, who like, who would fit the profile of somebody who I'd want to block, it would be Femetheus. But no, it doesn't happen because she doesn't... The Femetheus does not actually do what it takes to get herself blocked, at least by me, anyway. I mean, she says her bigoted stuff and, you know, and and annoying viewpoints, but that doesn't, that doesn't, that doesn't necessitate blocking her. That's because she doesn't make threats of harm or anything like that, you know? So that's why she doesn't get blocked. But this little fucker right here, he's gonna slip up, most likely, and he's gonna get blocked. I mean, like, what does he have to contribute to YouTube? Like, no video, he doesn't even upload videos. Fuck, he probably don't even pirate stuff. I mean, not that I'm for piracy, and I'm going to have to make a video about that, but see, you know, this is like, how many is this now? Like, well, never been pwned. He was three people in one because he was one person that used three different accounts uh, to troll uh, to troll me. And then Mike Murdoch was another. He got um, blocked. And, um, and then... Uh, so that's three accounts that I blocked. Now let's see. Um, 
Who was that other one? Um, oh, crap. Um, uh, and then, um, oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, yeah, Never Been Pwned and Halo Daddy 2645 and You Are All Zombies Rises are all the same person. Um, yeah, okay. Now, oh, gosh, there, there was more people that I blocked. Uh, there's another person. Um, yeah, Mike Murdoch. And there's like some anyway. Anyway, so uh Hellos Bump a Snitch is is gonna screw up and they're gonna get blocked. They're not blocked right now, but they're 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 gonna get it. Um Alright, I'm gonna send this article to that dumb fucker because like he's pretty stupid. And um Come on. Oh, I got the opportunity right now. See, my mouse is hovering over block user, but I'm not going to do it yet. I'm going to send a message. You're a troll and need some info. Here is that... send them the uh, bullying with impunity preview the need for elite MIGTO as just an attached video I'm sending them the article which is this article right here and uh, ooh. oh and this is from the Army Times uh, I think it's an official, um, army, uh, newspaper put out by the United States Army, which is, you know, military. <clears throat> not that these people will actually care, not that Hillos Bumpusnitch will actually care, um, or even take notice, or even acknowledge. All right, guy reserves. All right, now, okay, now you've seen how, you know, how men are treated whenever they're suffering, or whenever they're a victim, or whenever they get suicidal thoughts and all that. Now we are going to see how women are regarded. Um, you know, how they, um are dealt with whenever they have uh, suicidal thoughts. I'm just going to rotate this microphone here to point it at the speaker of the computer um, and so you can hear what um, so you can hear what I hear Turn up 
too loud. I'm going to do an audio check. So can we get DishNet high-speed internet over there? Yep. What about over there? Uh-huh. You can get it all over. Well, that's good news. The crop is fighting back tonight, and so is the community. 7 Action News reporter Tom Waite shows us how she's not letting school bullies get the best of her. Here at Okama Heights High School, it was a prank so cruel, so nasty, that it made this teen consider killing herself. 16-year-old Whitney Crop was voted onto the homecoming court as a joke. 